Using salt in your watercolor paintings is a really great, fun way to achieve some interesting and unique textures and effects in your watercolor paintings. But do you just throw some salt on your painting? Not exactly. Today I'm going to show you how to look for the right wetness in your paper to get the right results. Hi, I'm Brett Blumenthal and this is my channel where I share lots of great tips on how to paint with watercolors. If you're new to watercolors, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and look for those free resources that I provide down below. With that, let's get started on how to apply salt to your watercolor paintings. I've split my paper into six different sections because I want to show you the differences of how salt reacts depending on how wet the paper is and how large the granulars are. So on top, I'm going to show you how different levels of wetness affects the amount of reaction your salt has. And then on the bottom, we're just going to play with the different sizes of your granulars. So I'm going to wet my section here. I'm going to start there on the left upper side, grab some paint, and I'm going to try to make it pretty dark because I feel like you'll be able to see the differences a little bit more easily. So this is a pretty nice dark indigo. Just get that nice and wet and I really want it to be fresh paint when I apply this here. And I'm going to drop in right away some salt. And you can see that it starts to react rather quickly. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the next section. And this was kind of a fine grain of salt so we're going to go here and we're going to let it dry a little bit more and i'm going to also paint here so that dries a bit And we're gonna let this dry as well. In the meantime, I'm going to paint this lower quadrant, try to get it wet again, and I wanna show you what a coarser salt will look like. So I'm actually going to take my salt grinder and just grind right into it. So it's a little coarser. Now this is kind of dried out, so I'm going to add salt to it now. And then we're going to let this dry even more and we'll see how that works. In the meantime, I'm gonna paint more here and on the bottom right hand quadrant as well. And now this is still pretty wet, so I want it to dry a little bit more. So we're gonna let these both dry a bit. Now this is pretty dry. It's not completely dry, it still has a dampness to it. So we're gonna add the salt now to it and see how it reacts. And this is still pretty wet, so we're gonna let these dry a little bit more. Now I wanna use the coarser salt here. And this we're gonna let dry even more. My wash kind of didn't wash as well as the others, but that's okay. And again, we're gonna add coarser salt here. 
Okay, so we're gonna let these completely dry and then take a look at them and see how they all compared. Now I'm just gonna brush the crystals off a little bit. So now we can compare how salt works depending on how wet it is or how fine the granulars are. So on the upper level, we did fine granulars from wet to medium wet to pretty dry. And then on the bottom, we did coarse granules from wet to medium to rather dry. And really didn't make too much of a difference. You get a coarser feel with the larger granulars and you get these little hot spots, if you will, that are centers of where the salt is when you have larger granules but the way it reacts is pretty similar. So if you're looking for sort of that really obvious texture that comes from salt, you're going to use it when it's wetter. And then when you want to get sort of a finer texture from the salt, you start using it as it's dry. The drier paint really doesn't seem too obvious. So it has a much more subtle appearance. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And now you can really see the difference between them all. So what you want to think about when you're using salt is how wet your paper is, what kind of granules you're working with, and this will give you a real base understanding as to what you can expect. As always, thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it and please subscribe to the channel. If you're new to watercolors, go ahead and download those free resources to get you started. And now I'll see you in the next video.